All right, you guys, this lesson is uh, we're analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. So we've been doing uh, lots of these already. Uh, this is just kind of fine-tuning everything. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. And then at the top, there's a, a yellow toolbar, a yellow ruler. Uh, and then you go into your Algebra 2 link, okay? So there's lots of classes at the top. All right, and if you're in my class, I gave a board problem here. So this was board problem 56. So write um, the y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 7 in vertex form by completing the square. And vertex form is y equals a quantity x minus h squared plus k. Okay, where the vertex is hk. All right, so here we go. So what we're going to do is, uh, remember, there, this has to be a 1x squared. So we got to pull that 2 out. There's a 2 right there. So we pulled the 2 out of the x squared, and we had to pull it out of the 4x also. So if you're wondering where, you know, just imagine if I re-put this 2 back through, I'd get 2x squared, and then this would get me a minus 4x. Okay, okay here's that plus 7 right there. All right, now we take half of this number, which is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So I add 1 right here. So it's half of this number squared. So we're going to add 1 over here, but it's not going to be 1 on this side. It's going to be 2 on that side right there because we didn't add 1 on this side. We added this 2 times 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So we had to balance out the equal sign. Whatever you do to one side, we added 2 on this side, so we got to add 2 on this side, okay? But the 1 is inside of the parentheses. All right, so now this factors, you guys. This factors to x uh, minus 1 squared. Okay, so x minus 1 squared, a nice perfect squared trinomial. Okay, and then so that gets us to this stage right here. And then we don't want this plus 2 right here. We want to subtract 2 from both sides. So if we subtract 2 from 7, we get uh, uh, y equals 2 quantity x minus 1 quantity squared plus 5. Okay, now I didn't say anything else about this, but this is a parabola, you guys. The vertex is, I tell my students, opposite same. So it's at 1 comma 5. It's going up because it's positive, so it goes up 2 times 1 squared, 2 times 2 squared, 2 times 3 squared, and so on. So you'd graph uh, at 1, 5, and then so let's pretend like this is 1, 5. When I go over 1, it's going to go up 2 times 1 squared. So 1 squared and then times 2 is 2. It'd go up 2. If I went over 2, I'd square that, 2 times 2 squared, and then 2 squared is 4, it would go up 8. Okay, if I went back to the vertex and I went over 3 on both sides, if I went over 3, same thing over here. 2 times 3 squared would be 18, because 3 squared is 9 times 2 would take me up there. So it's just a parabola. All right, so here we go. Let's analyze uh, graphs of polynomial functions. Uh, so here we go. We're going to graph f of x is 1 sixth x plus 3 times x minus 2 squared. Okay. And we've done this already in a couple of other lessons right here. So the, um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, get the intercept. So set this equal to 0 as we get negative 3. Set this equal to 0, we get uh, 2 right here. Okay, And 2 is a double root because it's being squared. All right, when it's a double root, well, we'll talk more about that in just a second right there. Okay, so um, so let's plot the intercepts, uh, negative 3 and 2 right there, okay? And then let's check this out. Let's do a little analyzing here. Here's 1x right here. This uh, squared part gets us 2x's, so here's x squared and x. This is a, an x cubed equation, and since that's positive, my graph is going to be starting down here, and it's going to go up. It's going to have, since it's cubed, it's going to have two humps. Later we'll call them turning points, but it'll have two humps. It'll go up and it'll come back down. There's one hump right there. It'll come back down and it'll go back up, okay? And it'll go up that way. Since it's cubed, it starts down here and ends up in this direction. Odd roots goes up uh, in this direction as long as it's positive. If that was negative one six, it'd start up here and go down this way. All right, so here's the intercepts right there. And then let's just graph some points. Let's plot some more points to get a general idea of what's happening here. So we'll put in negative 4 right here. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So we get a negative 1 times, a, and then negative 6 squared is positive 36. So negative 1 times uh, 36 is negative 36. All right, and then uh, 1 sixth of that's going to get us negative 6. Okay, so when we go over 4, we're going to go down here to negative 6. Okay, all right, starting to get a little bit more. Let's plug in negative 2. I'm going to save time. When we plug in negative 2, we get 8 thirds or 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, 
So here it is, negative 2. Um, uh, we plugged in negative 2 right here. Negative 2 plus 3 is, negative, is uh, 1. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So here it is right there. So it gives us 16 sixths, which is 8 thirds. Okay, so which is 2 and uh, 2 thirds. So up 1, 2, and 2 thirds right there. Okay, plug in negative 1. And we get uh, 3. We're going to plug in uh, 0. 0 is easy. We get 2. Okay, you can see the graph. See how it's starting to do? There's a hump right there, and it's probably going to hump right there. Okay, in fact, I'll do this right now, you guys. Since this is a double root, then this hump is going to be right on the axes. If it's a double root, then one of your turning points, we'll learn in just a second, or your humps, I called them earlier, uh, is on the axes. Okay, so when we plug in 1, we get 0.7. When we plug in 3, we get 1. Now, if we plugged in 4, you guys, let's just do 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 minus uh, 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4, so 7 times 4 is going to be, what, 28, and then one-sixth of that is going to be uh, 4 and some change right there, or 4 and two-thirds, okay? So, um, so describe the end behavior. The end behavior is as x goes this way, f of x is going down. So as x goes to negative infinity, f of x sinks down here to positive infinity. And as we go this way, as x goes to positive infinity, f of x is going up this way. So now we're going to go ahead and draw the graph. So there it is right there. Isn't that a beauty? All right, let's try that with this one right here. Okay, so here we have another double root right here. So we're going to have a hump right at negative 1 right there. Okay, and then there's... Um, another intercept at, at 1 and another intercept at 3. So the, the x-intercepts are negative 1, double root, positive 1, and positive 3 right there, okay? All right, so there they are right there, and then we're going to go ahead and plot some points right there so that we get all of those points. I'm just saving time right there, but we get them, okay? Now, I'm not going to graph negative 3, negative 96. Negative 3, negative 96 is way down here, okay? I don't know why I didn't graph negative 2, negative 15. Well, because I don't have enough room. Negative 2, negative 15 is also way down here. I just didn't have enough room. Okay, so I only graphed these two guys right here in 445. Okay, uh, it's just telling me that the graph is doing uh, something like that right there. Okay. All right, did I say negative, positive, you guys? Sorry, you guys. And I knew it was going to be uh, up like this because there's two X's here. There's one X there. There's another X there. There's four X's. So I knew it was going to be a touchdown kind of graph. But it's going to be, since there's four X's, there's going to be three humps. One, two, three three humps right here okay and notice this double root the one of the humps is on the double root right there so if you have a double root then your hump is on there okay again we'll call them turning points in just a bit as x goes this way forever uh, f of x is shooting up here forever so as x goes to uh, uh, negative infinity whoops i got this wrong f of x is going to positive infinity whoa warning warning all right so let me let me take out that negative right there, okay? If it'll let me. It's not going to let me. Okay, I know what I'll do. Time out. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'd redo this video, but I'm going to run out of time, you guys. I got some kids coming in at lunch today, so... All right, and then as x goes to positive infinity, f of x is also going to positive infinity up there, okay? All right, so the turning points give what's called the local maximums and the local minimums. They're the humps parts right there, okay? The local maxes and mins are always y-coordinate. So on that first graph, here's a turning point. It's increasing, and then it all of a sudden it turns and starts decreasing. And then right here, it turns again and starts increasing. So they're called turning points. So some books call them uh, relative maxes and relative mins. This book is calling it a local max and a local min. Okay, so it's a it's a it's a local maximum between you know this this area of points right here. And your local max is always the y coordinate of that uh, uh, the of that point right there. So the uh, the local max is y equal three. This one is a local min right here. So the local min is y equals zero right here on this other graph right here. Here's a local min because it goes down, goes down, goes down, then it starts going up. So there's a local min right here at y equals 0. There's a local max right here at y equals 3. And then there's a local min way down here at y equals negative 9. Okay? All right, if you guys are in my class, I'm going to give you guys that assignment. Take care, you guys.